This is episode 9 of the Coronavirus Daily and I am Ajay Punya. In bad times, innovation can occur in habits of mind as well as in new technologies. The frightening COVID-19 pandemic may be creating such a change now by forcing many of us to slow down, to spend more time in personal reflection away from the noise and heave of the world. With more quiet time, more privacy and more stillness, we have an opportunity to think about who we are as individuals and as society. The date today is 2nd April, Thursday. First, the uncertain. We are still in a stage where talking economics seems futile as whatever estimates you make, one thing is certain, those estimates will have to be revised. So allow me to make a small observation. The pandemic will cause a rethink of globalized supply chains where right now a stay-at-home order in one country can affect millions of lives on the other side of the world. For example, till about a month ago, global supply chains took a hit as China shut its factories. And now, when China is open, the rest of the world is shut, making trade extremely chaotic. Bangladesh is another example, which has garments making up 85% of its exports, whose buyers have now almost completely vanished. And the relief package that was announced by the PM Sheikh Hasina was a paltry 0.2% of their GDP to workers in export-oriented industries. Make of it what you will, but nobody's buying. By now, you would have heard of stories of doctors facing the dilemma of who to provide critical medical attention to in case of lack of resources and who to be left to die. For a doctor, this is a nightmare case of an overflowing hospital and the responsibility of decision making. As India breaches the 2000 positive cases mark, this is a scenario that will come sooner than we think. What if we share the burden of decision making? What if we start having an advanced directive or a living will where the patient decides what the doctor should do when the patient is critically ill? Should medicines and machines keep the patient alive when some of the organs begin failing? As Sunita Puri wrote in the New York Times, and I'll just phrase it in the form of a question. Is it time to talk death? And now for the good, the bad and the ugly. The good. While people are staying indoors, guess who's outdoors? The non-humans. With humans retreating into their homes as more and more countries go under coronavirus lockdown, wild animals are slipping uh, cover to explore the empty streets of some of the world's biggest cities. Wild deer in Trincomalee, Sri Lanka, goats in Ladutno, whales, Nilgai in Noida, and even a puma in Santiago, Chile. Do you think their reclaiming of the human habitation has a message? Well... I for one think, when this gets over, humans need to stand up for animals. A little more compassion, a little less greed and lots more respect. By now you would have seen Bill Gates' 2015 TED talk where he said if anything kills over 10 million people in the next decade, it's most likely to be highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. And recently, he also spoke of ideas on battling COVID-19 and making up for the lost time since the decision-making window is still open. First, we need a consistent nationwide approach to shutting down. Shut down anywhere means shut down everywhere. Second, the government needs to step up on testing. And finally, we need a data-based approach to developing treatments and a vaccine. While scientists go about doing that, in the meantime, leaders can help by not stoking rumors or panic buying. The bad. Papoon Valisuta, the chairman of Quant Group and a well-known investment banker, passed away this week due to COVID-19. Last month, he had traveled to United Kingdom to close down the $10 billion deal to take over Esco Lotus Thailand. The deal was one of Southeast Asia's largest business transactions. As sad as his death is, like all the other deaths across the world, this unfortunate incident should make you think about your own company. If somebody or the top leadership in your company is incapacitated, suddenly, do you have a backup? Of course, 
it would be tragic to think that way. But with the rate with which this virus is transmitting, it would be a good idea to have a plan. You know, just in case. And now, the ugly. If your anxiety got triggered listening to the bad, I would request you to avoid listening anymore. Okay? So now that you're still here. As the number of testing labs in India increased, the total test count done in India is now picking up, but still a far cry from what it should have been right now. But as number of tests increase, the backlog is only set to increase. What does that mean? Treating suffering patients slows down and thus containing the pandemic becomes an uphill task. And if it weren't already, as policymakers take decisions with a lag. While US has reported this backlog, India still hasn't because we still have far cry from testing potential. But it's a parameter in this pandemic we must keep one eye on. Time now for the big question. When will this end? Or another way to ask the same question. When can I go to school or sit in a bar without the fear that I will drop dead in two weeks time? The answer is when approximately 60% of the population or 80% if you're not too adventurous is resistant to COVID-19. Now, when will that happen? Okay, there are two ways to achieve this uh, herd immunity. One, when there is a vaccine and the other is when the disease wins over many human lives and leaves others immune. That is those who get the disease and then recover. By now, you would have understood that both will take at least 12 months. But in the meanwhile, we can expect some careful relaxations like people with certified immunity can go back to work or move about in public spaces. Now, before I go, the funnies or what the hell is happening journal of the day. For much of February and March, cruise ships floated through headlines as clusters of COVID-19 infections broke out on board. For a long time, it was the Diamond Princess, then it was the Grand Princess, and in an ongoing saga, the carnival-owned Holland America's Zandam reached Florida today, with 200 sick and four dead passengers. Despite coronavirus outbreaks, cruise ship bookings are up for 2021. Booking volume is up 9% as opposed to the same time last year. Frankly, I don't understand what's wrong with these people. Maybe it's just pure pressure. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to crack a joke on that one, but that was a quick one-liner. Maybe they had a sale on. Goodbye, wash your hands, and see you tomorrow.